Isaiah chapter 42, Luke, the 42nd book of the Bible. Behold my servant, talking about Jesus Christ, who I uphold, my elect. There's an election. Jesus Christ. All this big deal about the election and all that. When was the last time somebody said, I would elect Jesus Christ? God did. In whom my soul delighteth, in Matthew 3.17, 17, 17.5, Mark 1.11, Luke 3.22, and 2 Peter 1.17. The Bible says out of the mouth of God, this is my beloved son, who I am well pleased. From Isaiah 42, verse 1. I have put my spirit, the Holy Spirit, upon him. Tribulation. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. 2, 3, and 4. First Advent. Second Advent, then First Advent. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He says, on the way, the truth, and life. The life of Jesus Christ, the 33 and a half years, he didn't cause no wars. He didn't cause any disturbances. Unless you were the Pharisees or the scribes, the high priest. Pretty much, I mean, pretty much the people enjoyed the healing. They enjoyed his word, except for his own hometown. But pretty much the life ministry of Jesus Christ, there was no tumult. There was no big, you know, the media come along, there's chaos and there's trouble and there's a crisis. That's his second advent. He shall not fail. I thought he died. He came out of that grave. Nor be discouraged. You would think he was. You would think that, you know, the priest that God set up wanted them dead. The 12 disciples he called out, one betrayed him, one is at the cross, one denied him, and the, all the rest, where were they? Of all the people he healed, all the devils he cast out, and John said, I mean, we couldn't even contain all the books of the stuff that he's done. Where were they? I get discouraged when, you know, when as a Christian, and I'm, I'm getting battered by other Christians. That discourages me. Till he, God, Jesus, has set judgment in the earth. Second advent. And the isles shall wait for his law. Thus save the God of the let's thus save God the Lord. He that created the heavens. Alright, so your God the Lord. <laughs> We have seen as has to be the God of Israel, has to be the God of Jacob, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has to be a God, the creator. You can't have the prophet Charlie Darwin in the God of evolution. you got to have God, the creator. Hebrews 11 says you got to believe who he is. I'm going to I'm going to step my toe out there and everybody can step on. I believe one of the things you got to believe to, to be saved is God's the creator. And when you get some of these people to say this, oh I said a prayer, what was their standpoint on the creation? And stretched them out. He spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, oars, animals, plants, food, weather. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, uh, Genesis chapter 2. And the spirit to them that walk therein. So the, the breath and the spirit come from God. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. And this would be about the nation of Israel. I will hold thy hand. I will keep thee. And give thee for a covenant of the people. 
for a light to the Gentiles. Then we're back to God and Jesus again. To open the blind eyes, Jesus. To bring out the prisoners from the prison, Jesus. And them that are sitting in darkness out of the prison house. That's Jesus. Now God also called Israel to be called out to be righteous. But they have failed. We'll see that in a moment. But he called Jesus Christ of his brethren. Jesus Christ fulfilled 100% what man couldn't do. Jesus Christ fulfilled what the nation could not do. Jesus, I mean, God called out the nation of Israel. All right, follow all these rules and laws and regulations. Can't do it. Jesus came unto his own, and he fulfilled all the laws to the T, to the jot and the tittle. So the failure of the nation of Israel, Jesus fulfilled. The failure of what man is, Jesus fulfilled. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory will I not give to another. Any noun, person, place, or thing, you don't give any glory to it. If your glory is not in God the Father and God the Son, then you have sinned against God. Any glory. My glory will I not give to another. No, we have a great church. Well, who gave you that great church? Well, we have a great pastor. Oh, okay. Neither my praise to graven images. Well, there, well, I mean, have we not got to the point what God thinks about graven images? And when you got a religion that's involved in graven images, and they'll say an aid to worship, what's the but? They don't care what the Bible says. And if you can get a religion who's involved in that mess and get them in the Bible and show them the black and white of God, written, written, your average Catholic does not know that's in the Bible. Well, don't the Catholics have the Ten Commandments? Yeah. The commandment about idols and images has been removed and number 10 has been split into two. Check it out. Behold, the former things are come to pass. New things do I, God, declare, for they spring forth, I tell you of them. There's that prophecy. We spoke about that the other night. How do you know the difference between God and religion? What's the prophecy? How detailed is the prophecy? How much of that prophecy has been fulfilled? If there is an utter failure... Then it's not God. Well, you know, what about? It may not be a failure if it has not been fulfilled yet. And yet it's future. And it's not so such a lame, blame kind of prophecy that there's going to be a mass destruction in the world this year. No, 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 no. That's too lame, blame. Behold, the former things are come to pass. The new things do I declare. Behold, they spring forth, I tell you them. Sing unto the Lord a new song. So turn on the radio dial, AM, FM, satellite, whatever you got. Who are they singing to? America's a Christian nation. God bless America. Turn the radio dial on. Go into your favorite grocery store, go into your favorite mall, go into your favorite place of business, and the music that's being played out of those speakers, is it to God? They sing about love, 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 love. They don't know that God is love. And his praise from the end of the earth, all over the earth. You know, the end of the earth, there is no end of the earth. The earth is round. And he that go down to the sea, sailors, and all that therein, the isles, and it happens there. Everybody is supposed to sing unto God. If you don't sing unto God, you fail. 
Contemporary Christian music is not singing to God. You failed. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. And the villages of Kedar does inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock, I believe that would be Edom, sing. Everybody is supposed to sing unto God. Like I said, go on to one of them web pages where you can download music. So you can listen. And how much of it is actual Bible centered Christian music and the glorification of God? You got churches today that don't, okay, open this, this, this number in the hymnal, and some of the hymns are sung that are wrong. Let the stout from the top of the mountain. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praises in the islands. They say that's Gentile. Or copes. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I wonder what that is. That's the second advent. Roar, lion of the tribe of Judah. He's angry. Listen, we have a God that's jealous when you give your love and honor and devotions to anything, anyone, anywhere else. Well, you know, we're going to set our afflictions on. We're going to go down to this city and this state, and it's the entertainment world. We can ride the big roller coasters. We can sit in lines for hours. We can, you know, we can go on the big cruise ship. That's the jealous God. I says, I know many Christians. I got their, I got their family name right here in my head. I won't say it. And their family is the admiration of them. It's their family. We'll, we'll, we'll miss church. So we can have a family reunion and that entire family's been broken and destroyed. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. That's tribulation. You know what God's saying about Israel right there? It's about Israel. How many years have I left the church age? How many times have the Gentiles brought to you your Messiah? How many times do you reject? Listen, you know a lot. I'm not going to say most. I'm going to say, you know, a lot of the chastening, the lot of, and I'm not Christmas, all right? But a lot, of, we don't want to have Christmas carols in the mall. We don't want to call it a Christmas tree. Which you shouldn't. But the Christ, the name in that. You know who most of those people who are fighting and trying to change all that? It's the Jews. Paul tells us they're the enemy of the gospel. And it has anything to do with Christ, even as pagan as it is. The people of Israel, the Jewish people, we gotta get rid of that. As much as the black people and the black power and black lives matter, they want to take over the whites. The Jews want to get rid of everything that has to do with Christ. And the proper Christian, not the pagan Christian, and he's out there trying to get Christ to them and trying to tell them about Jesus Christ like Paul did. And God's just sitting back, Come on, I'm long suffering. One day he's going to turn to Jesus. You know what? Okay. Call my child in. Give me the paddle. Get the church out of there. It's now Jacob's trouble. And Jacob's trouble is this literally God taking the behind of Israel. Whack, whack, whack. You just shut up. I don't want to hear your crying, Proverbs says. 
That's what Jacob's trouble is. It's the anger of God. You don't have me. You won't listen to me. You've sold your land. You've given up your land. And you're against the Messiah. One day God's going to say, okay, that's it. Bring the church home. Now, is it that the that the, the cup of the Jews has gotten God so angry? Or is the fact is the church has gotten so carnal worldly? And God, I, I've had it with both of them. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up their herbs. This is all tribulation. You find this all in the book of Revelation. There's fires, there's blood, the water turned to blood, there's no rain. I will make their rivers islands, and I will dry up the pools. No rain. Elijah shows up, no rain for three and a half years. What are you going to do about that, Moses? You know the water is left? Yeah. Blood. Whoa. And I will bring the blind by the way they know not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before. Now, the blind is not, you know, the physical eyesight is Revelation 12. God has prepared a place. God hasn't given up on Israel. And God says, I have prepared a place for them. And you don't even know if they're, they know where they're going. And Jesus gives in the book of Matthew, uh, when that time comes and the abomination of desolation, don't even go back to your, just run. And you better hope that the, your flights are not on the Sabbath. I will make darkness light before them. Darkness is under the Antichrist. The crooked, crooked thing shall be straight. And we saw that with the coming of uh, Isaiah chapter 39. We've seen that with the second advent passage of John the Baptist's ministry. You say, well, what's that with John the Baptist? John the Baptist is Elijah, and that's when Elijah comes to the tribulation period. The things will I do unto them and not and not and not forsake them. God is not finished with Israel. Never. He's angry with them as a father gets angry with his child, but he don't give up on his Listen, God ain't an American dad. God doesn't sire at you and say, get out of my face. I don't want you. God is a loving father. And one of them love, he says, listen, if, if you don't chastise your son and brother, you don't love your children. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed. And that's what the Antichrist is going to cause. That trust in graven images. Well, what, what's a graven image? The mark, the image of the beast. That say to the molten images, ye are our God. This is also the time of historical fact during Isaiah and Jeremiah. And Jeremiah does say, listen, we're worshiping the queen of heaven. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Jewish people, when we get to Jeremiah, they've got little Mary statues in front of their front yard. But it, it, her name is Asterisk. I wouldn't be surprised if the, if, if the people of Judah went out around the, the, the Easter cirrhosis and searched for eggs. We know by Jeremiah they go out and get a, get a tree and they cut it down and they bring it in and deck it with silver and gold. We know that. Never mind the church, you know, being blind. I'm talking about the nation of Israel. And all this is snuck into the church, the, 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 the Egypt and the Babylonian and the Rome and to the Catholic church and the church of much marriage has brought it to the churches. All that stuff today is here in Isaiah's time when they say little, little you know, images and dollies and, and idols. They're worshiping Mary under a new name. 
They're worshiping Easter under the name of Tammuz, Christmas, Tammuz, and Baal, and Balaam. Their names have been, the names of the gods have been changed not to protect their identity, but because we're a new culture. And it'll get far worse when we get to Jeremiah. But what you see in Isaiah and what you see in Jeremiah is happening in America. Jeremiah says as, as the images and idolatry is on every street of Jerusalem, man, on almost every street of America today, you find some church, some religious sect. And God says, I'm jealous. And he says, ye are gods. The people. There are people in religions that, that, that the religious heads, and I'll say in the Baptist church, there are pastors who are gods to the people. Even the time of Paul, when he's writing to the Corinthians, I am of Paul. I am of Silas. He says, are ye not cardinal? Welcome to the house of God in the singular form. Like your church is the only church. We're gods. We're great. We're wonderful. We're number one. And that angers God. And that's what it listen, you know, you know what they you know they, they show up to John the Baptist. You know what John the Baptist says? He says, Listen, don't come to me bragging about Abraham, okay? Because you see these rocks here, probably the ones that Joshua put. God's able to raise the children of Israel out of those rocks. Don't, don't come bragging. <coughs> Excuse me. They come sitting in Moses' seat. Remember that? Remember that in the Gospels? Find me that Moses' seat in, in the Scriptures. I don't ever remember a particular seat of Moses. Hear ye death. And look ye blind that ye may see. And, you know, and Jesus did that too. Jesus did the, the impossible. I read today in, in the Gospel of Luke. There's a man with a withered hand. And Jesus says, stretch forth that hand. Uh, that's what withered means? <laughs> And again, this is not blind, you can't see. Phys now see, you, you got to get physical from spiritual. That's the whole big realm of religion. They take the physical that's supposed to be spiritual, and they take the spiritual that's supposed to be physical. This is a nation of Israel, and, and they're not listening to God. This is a nation of Israel, and they don't know who Jesus is. How do you know that? Well, when Revelation 19 says Jesus comes back, he has a name that no man knoweth. Isaiah 53, we'll be coming too soon, says there's no beauty that they should desire him. <coughs> I mean, come on. Do you understand the prophecy of virgin shall conceive and bear a son? Do you understand that? Do you think they understood that? So if they're looking forward to Calvary, why wasn't the charge that here's this virgin woman who's never had uh, marital relations or, or marriage bed relations at all? She's been she's been impregnated by the Holy Spirit by the angel Gabriel. Why weren't they lying up at her door? Okay, here we go. We're going to the Messiah to the Calvary. Even John the Baptist, Father, again, I read today in Isaiah. He's coming to, to destroy our enemies. That second advent, not the first. You see, when Jesus came the first time, they were looking for the throne, the king. Not the savior, not the cross, not the thorns. Looking for the rulership, the scepter, and the king. Wipe out our enemies. After Jesus, fed, I think it's John chapter 6. After Jesus, you know why Jesus took off? Because they were going to make him king. Why were they going to make him king? Free food. 
<laughs> it gets me. Uh, let me do a little tack right here. We'll get back to the but Let me make a uh, welfare. Uh, give it free food to the people. Did not Jesus give the people free food? Uh -huh. I had to say that, Jack. I'm sorry. That's in the flesh. Who is blind but my servant, Israel? Hear ye deaf, look ye blind. He says, who are the blind? Israel. Or deaf. As my messenger that I sent. Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as, as the Lord's servant? Israel is blind. They don't know who the Messiah is. Now, Isaiah says they're blind in B.C. 712. Why would you think they have eyes to see and ears to hear? Okay, here he is. Looking forward to Calvary. He says, stop. Why are you going to keep doing it? Because I got to attack the heresy that's being taught. They're looking forward to Calvary. Isaiah says, you're blind. Who's blind? Israel. The ones that are supposed to be looking for Calvary. They're blind. They can't hear. After Isaiah writes, and we get to Jeremiah, they're sure not looking to Calvary. They're looking to the Queen of Heaven. This is my ministry. The Lord has called me to, to refute, to rebuke. And the chasing with the words of the scriptures. Seeing many things. And look at all that Israel has seen. From Isaiah to today. But they observe it not. They, they don't know. They have the Passover. They celebrate the Passover today, but they read the, 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 the law is read, and yet they have not combined in their mind that, oh, we don't go to Jerusalem every year. From my understanding, I could be wrong, but I have seen many times where, where they lay out, a, a, a saved Jew will lay out the table of the Passover meal. And where the seat that the Messiah is supposed to sit, there, there's a part of the ram. I forget which part it is. You can look it up online or talk to a Jew, a, a saint. You can talk to a lost Jew, they'll tell you. But there's a particular seat at their house reserved for the Messiah. And on that plate, there's a part of a lamb. Well, the Bible says not, not a bone of him should be broken. There's a piece of meat with a bone in it. Well, look at the Calvary. They, they broke it at the Passover meal. And even when, when Jesus, look, we know thou art sent from God because no man could do these miracles. They couldn't see it. And Pilate says, I know because of envy. Open the ears, but hearing not. And even Jesus said, they have ears to hear, but they hear not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteous sake. That's Jesus. He will magnify the law. That's Jesus. And make it honorable. That's Jesus. 22. Tribulation. But this is a people Israel robbed and spoiled. They will. Everything and every possession. Because unless you receive that mark, there's no buying and there's no selling. They are all of them snared in holes, traps. They are hid as in prison houses. And you visited my people when they were in prison. They are for a prey of the Antichrist, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none shall say or say it, restore, give it back to the Jew. No one's gonna say give it back to Jew. And there'll be some people are gonna help them and feed them and take care of them. Who among you will give ear to this? One of the prophets writes, there'll be a famine of the word of God. Who 
who will hearken and hear for the time is to come. Prophecy. Who gave Jacob for a spoil in Israel to the robbers? All the world. Coming up in Jeremiah, Esau will do it when Babylon comes in. Did not the Lord he against whom we have sinned? They sinned against God. For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient to his law, the nation of Israel. Tribulation. 23 and 24 is why the tribulation. Back to the tribulation, 25. Therefore he, God, has poured out upon him the fury of his anger, Jacob's trouble, and the strength of, the, of battle. And, ha, and it has set him on fire round about. And yet he knew not. <laughs> Jacob, Israel, doesn't even know why yet. And it burned him. And yet he laid it not to heart. Probably won't understand to the 144,000 Moses and Elijah. Because for, for the first three and a half years, the Jews are going to be happy as clams. If clams are happy, I don't know if they are. Because there's the temple, there's the temple ser service. Now, when Jesus died, he rent that veil into two. Whoa, the veil's rent. Rip gets the sewing. Reject the Messiah. The next time that, 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 that temple is there, the next event at that veil. When a man like Zacharias is going to be at the incense altar at the time of prayer, he's going to come running up. Did you see Gabriel? There's a man standing in, in the mercy seat. I saw him. Run! That's going to be the word from the priest. Get out! When they see standing in the abomination of desolation spoke about Daniel the prophet, run! The Antichrist is going to be in the most holy place. And he's going to pull that veil apart. He's not going to rip. He's going to pull it open. And the priests are going to be in the holy place. Whoa! Then the great tribulation, the last three and a half years. At that point, Israel will have some understanding. 